welcome to Anoki Pulse TV, where we keep you informed, entertained, and on your toes. I'm Dilshad. And I'm Daniel. Today's show is laced with all things great as we talk about some pop culture icons that still have an impact today and a women's summit that's determined to make a difference. You got it, Daniel. Now, the Obamas are on their way out of the White House, but they're striving to make as much of an impact as possible before their time is up. So Michelle Obama's latest initiative is bringing together some powerful women to change tomorrow. It's called the United State of Women, a huge summit convened by the White House to rally advocates of gender equality, celebrate the great strides made in the struggle so far, and to determine how to take action to move forward and improve the state of women in the U.S. and around the world. We are the United State of Women. The United State of Women. The United State of Women. In the lead up to the summit, a video message was released earlier this week featuring prominent women from the worlds of film, fashion, TV, business, sports and more delivering a powerful message. We stand stronger when we stand together. Influential stars like Oprah Winfrey, Tina Fey, Laverne Cox and Meryl Streep joined other powerhouse women like Indra Nui, CEO of PepsiCo and Dr. Jen Welter, the first female NFL coach, to affirm mantras of body positivity, innovation, fearlessness and pay equality. Because, because duh, literally duh. Along with experts and grassroots leaders discussing key issues affecting women and how best to address them, the event will also feature Michelle Obama in conversation with Oprah Winfrey in what is sure to be an epic exchange of ideas and stories. The buzz around the summit is massive, with the hashtag State of Women making its presence felt on Twitter and 5,000 people registered to attend on June 14th. And to reach out to even more people, it'll be live streamed on unitedstateofwomen.org. And for those of us not lucky enough to attend, we're being encouraged to join in the movement via a pledge generator and help spread the message of gender equality through social media and the ever popular profile pic filter. Muhammad Ali's passing has the whole world mourning the loss of a boxing legend. But it's prompted us to celebrate his life and those of some legends past. Take a look. Sing Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. He floats like a butterfly. Muhammad Ali was known as a boxing legend, leaving a social and cultural legacy that lives on today. He was also a comic book hero, a kid's cartoon character, and even a Grammy-nominated singer, all helping him cement his pop culture status. Catch me if you can. So let's look back at some other Hollywood and Bollywood icons who still have hold over pop culture today. Come fly with me, we'll float down to Peru. Frank Sinatra was one of the most influential musical artists of the 20th century. Come on, fly with me, we'll... This classic crooner was considered timeless all across the board, in looks, style, vocals and music. <laughs> like Sinatra, Bollywood's Mukesh is known for his classic crooner vocals and hit songs such as Sab Kuch Si Ka Humne and Kabhi Kabhi Mere Dil Mein. Kabhi Kabhi Mere Dil Mein Marilyn Monroe was a popular sex symbol during the late 40s and 50s, known for roles in films like The Seven Year Itch and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. I just love finding new places to wear diamonds. Parveen Babi was also a sex symbol in India during the 70s and 80s. Known for her western appeal and skin-tight get-ups, Babi was often called on to play the vamp or the sexy siren in dance numbers. Her sex appeal even landed her on the cover of Time magazine in 1976, the first for any Indian. Speaking of beauty, the expressive eyes and simplicity of Audrey Hepburn was enough to captivate the minds of Hollywood moviegoers. <coughs> Known for her great acting skills in films like Roman Holiday, Hepburn was also popular for her simple style and girl next door charm. I'd like to do just whatever I like. India's Nargis was also known for her simplicity as well, often playing down the glamour and just letting her natural beauty shine. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor went on to become a brand mogul with a cosmetic and fragrance empire that most of our grandmothers and moms loved. Time has passed so quickly. Classy and sophisticated, combined with exotic looks and ebony black hair, Elizabeth Taylor was a director's delight. <laughs> Madhubala also had the same alluring beauty with pitch black locks and porcelain skin. Madhubala went on to become one of the most iconic actresses in Indian cinema, now being cited as the epitome of talent and beauty combined. We are the champions, my friend. Freddie Mercury is probably one of the biggest pop cultural musical showmen there ever lived, most remembered for his over the top and flamboyant stage presence. Hey, gonna get 
The legendary singer Kishore Kumar was one of the most popular showman-like singers in Bollywood film history, with songs laden with attitude and personality. So the Indian Censorship Board is at it again, this mm -hmm. time with Anurag Kashyap's upcoming film Urta Punjab, right. which deals with the drug trade in Punjab and also substance abuse among the youth. Right. Now the film is meant to just use Punjab as a place where this drug abuse is happening and comment on a topic or a problem that's plaguing the entire country. Right. But the Indian Censorship Board has asked for cuts and they want the film to take place in a fictitious land. It should not be <laughs> happening in Punjab. Mm. And they've also asked for the swearing and a little bit of the drugs um, topic to kind of be toned down. And right. of course, no one's happy about this. Right, absolutely. The Indian Censorship Board has been making some really interesting choices <laughs> when it comes to what they want to cut nowadays. Yeah. Now, we just had India's first porn com, Kya Cool Hai Hum 3, get an adult certificate. <laughs> but you know, it, it went to air perfectly fine. Of course, they had, there was some noise, there were a few cuts there, mm -hmm. but they seem to not mind the sexual stuff and the violence so much as they do anything that seems to critique the country. Mm -hmm. And I think it has to do a lot with the government that's in power right now and its more sort of conservative nationalistic values. Anything that mm -hmm. sort of shows India in maybe a not so great light is just a no-go. To comment on your anti-nationalistic point there, mm -hmm. Anurag Kashyap, believes that. Right. Now he went on to say that the Indian censorship board is acting like North Korea. Oh, okay. Geez. Now okay. it is his artistic work that's into question here. Sure. I do think the North Korean analogy is a bit of an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it reminds me of when Doom 2 was released mm -hmm. and when Rithik Roshan and Ashwarya Raya had a kiss. Right. It was a shitty kiss to be completely <laughs> honest with you. But the Indian censorship board wanted it cut out because it was anti-national. Oh, I don't know how a freaking kiss was anti-national. Yeah. So th that sort of dialogue has been going on for a very long time. But something else that has come up is piracy. Mm -hmm. A lot of the artistic creators and the actors and directors believe that the censorship board with their endless cuts yeah. is promoting piracy. Yeah. Nobody wants to see the dumbed down cut version of this film. They exactly. want to see the risque, the edgy film. Right. And so it just encourages people to steal those reels, put them online and right. promote something that India is trying to prevent at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But when you don't get access to something, it promotes an underground market and yes. that's what piracy is. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Now, you know what? I'm very hopeful. Hopeful that there can be more room for progression. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff we're seeing in Indian cinema now that we haven't seen before, you right, know? Yep. There's so much sexual freedom for the female characters now, you yes, know? Yes, absolutely. And now there's the whole over-sexualization of the male body, which I <laughs> love. Because sure there never do. used to be any room for the gay male gaze, sure. you know? So I really think that slowly but surely there can be some progress here. You know, hope springs eternal. I completely agree. <laughs> I feel like with the content that you're talking about, there has been a lot of progress. Yeah. But when it comes to anything that's even slightly critiquing the country, I feel like we're actually regressing. Yeah. You know, so we'd mm -hmm. like to know your thoughts on the issue as well. You can chime in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's right. That's it from us. Ta -da, till next time. Ciao. Don't forget to stay in the loop for your weekly dose of entertainment glitz and glam with Anoki Pulse TV. And be sure to subscribe to our channel for exclusive access to all that's happening behind the velvet rope. And if you missed last week's episode, you can click right over here and enjoy it. Don't forget to.